Hello everybody and welcome. We're going to do something a little bit different this time in between projects. I've decided to play a little bit more Neverwinter Nights 2. So, on the suggestion of a woman from Portugal named Maria Silva, she suggested that I do one of these player-created campaigns. She suggested this one, Sarvates. So I guess we'll do this one. I've read a little bit about this. This is about the Sarmatians who were contemporaries of the Romans. So this is like a historical period piece, kind of less than a pure fantasy setting. So yeah, something different. You know, let's read this. It says, second century AD, you are a young member of the Sarmatis Iazigis tribe. I'm, I know I'm butchering the translation here. At the encampment near the river Tizza, or Thais, your warrior's initiation is about to end. Choose the path of the warrior, the path of the spirit, or a more personal path and enter the legend. Okay, so we're going to be, I guess, fighting the Romans in this one and this was made by somebody whose first language was French so obviously they're more used to speaking French so the English is gonna be a little off I'm gonna say I mean I played through a little bit not too far because I just wanted to see what it was like so I decided to play it and you know, I might as well record it. So I do have a plan here going forward. As I read the dialogue, I'm going to try to render it as best I can into regular spoken English. Because if I read it just word for word, it's going to sound a little bit off. So we're going to start this campaign. I went to nwn2db.com and I chose a character for this that I think is appropriate since we are going to be starting in a tribe. So I wanted to choose somebody who is either a barbarian, a druid, or a ranger. And I think the ranger type class would be the best for this. Plus, you gotta mix in some rogue in there. You know, I love playing rogue type characters with sneak attacks. So, the build that I have chose is called the Raging Rascal, and it's by Bob the Builder. However, I'm gonna tweak this build slightly because it's supposed to be with a wood elf, but since this is more of a historical campaign, I'm gonna modify that to a human, so let's create the character. So let's choose a human. I also can get an extra feat and one extra skill point, so I'd be able to get even more skills, or skill points I should say, every level. That way I'll be able to pick a a conversation skill because there are no conversation skills listed on here and I'll put a link in the description to this build even though it is for a wood elf not a human all right and we're gonna do human male all right so let's make him slightly tall and yeah that'll do it all right let's go for the should we go for some facial hair? Let's see, I wanna... I wanna pick a... Oh man, this these are all the choices I get. Crap. Okay, well the thing about the Sarmatians... They are like an Iranian type people. And they're very closely related to the Scythians. I've 
done a little bit of research and I found all this on Wikipedia, you know. So who would look more like someone from Central Asia? Maybe this guy, but he looks more African, I would say. But that's, that's facial features. Let's go for like a... No, that's a little too dark. Yeah, these people lived on the north coast of the Black Sea. Kind of where Crimea, Ukraine, southern Russia is. They were neighbors of the Dacians. I think that's how you pronounce it. Dacians. Who were people living in the Balkans region at the time. They lived in Romania and Bulgaria, the countries that exist there now, before they were conquered by the Romans and turned into a province. Let's see. Yeah, that should be good. Oh, I also picked a Sarmatian name, so I'm gonna try to go for a little authenticity here. Let's see, I think we want to go darker brown. I don't think this hair is going to do, though. Um, no. I don't think so. It's better. Yeah, we could go for, like, really long hair. A big ponytail. That could work. Let's see what else we got. Whoa, what the? What happened here? Um, I don't know, but something's broken. Who designed this thing? That's crazy. Should we go for the dreadlocks? No, oh, what's this? Oh, more, more ponytail. And I think we're back to where we started. No. Nope. Not quite. Got the mohawk going. Captain Zavajo's hairdo. Fire tuck. Nah, I don't really like that one. Nope. Maybe we could go with this one. I think we might stick with this one. That's probably the best looking one. Yeah, there's Captain Savaho right there. Yeah, I guess we'll stick with this guy. Sure. We have a hair accessory, yep. Alright. Moving, moving along. Alright, first level for this one is a rogue. Which makes sense, because you get the most skill points at first level. Now, this says that we're going to be chaotic good. Our god is... Weron Windstrom. Even though these gods really don't apply to the world we're going to be in. It's more of like a Roman Greek type pantheon. So these really don't apply. But we'll just pick this one anyway. Okay, now the build calls for like pretty high strength. So it's 16 here. 
I'm setting it to 14. Here it says dex is 19. Let's set it to 18. We got 10 points to work with. Con, it said 12, so we'll leave that at 12. Intelligence, 12. And we have two more points. No, let's not do that. See if I if I do 17 then I have three extra points. I don't really want penalties on those. No. How about we put one into I guess intelligence? No, because we're going to be giving dex bonuses, it says, the entire time. Yeah, let's just, let's just do that. Alright. And it calls for the Wild Child, which gives plus one to survival, plus one to tumble, plus one to hide, plus one to move silently. Which, we're actually going to be using all of those. And we don't have any lore this time, unfortunately. So this is going to be a penalty, and we don't use a praise. And a penalty to that. And we're going to customize... So the skills that this build calls for are Tumble, Hide, Move Silently, Spot, Search, Survival, Use Magic Device, Open Lock, Disable Device, and for some reason, Set Trap. Because it's a cross skill with the Ranger class. So you'd be able to level it up at pretty much every level. Well, except for the two Shadow Dancers or, excuse me, one Shadow Dancer level we're going to be taking to get the Hide in Plain Sight. So let's go ahead and put four to Tumble. We're going to go put four to Disable, four to Hide. Let's see, four to Move Silently. Search, Spot. Survival. Oh, wait a minute. It says, not yet. We're not going to do that yet. Use magic device, we're going to do. So did I do open lock yet? Nope. And set trap. So I guess we're actually going to be setting traps in this particular campaign. We're going to be, instead of just selling them, we're going to be recovering traps and then using them. And now we have four for one conversation skill. So what should it be? Should it be bluff or diplomacy? We could also do intimidate. Plus I'm going to pick able learner because that's the extra feat that we're going to get. Let's see, what would be better? Would, it, would bluff be better? Yeah, we're going to pick bluff. Actually, we could do Intimidate also. No, I think Bluff is better. Okay. So we have two feats. I do want to do two weapon fighting, but we're actually going to be taking two weapon fighting as our Ranger specialization. So at second level, we get to choose either Archery or two weapon fighting. So we're going to do two weapon fighting for that. We don't need to pick it now. Do you want able learner? Where is it? Fey heritage. What does this do? You are naturally resistant to most common effects produced by your ancestors. Plus three bonus to saves against enchantments. Nah. Let's see where is? I do like this one. 
get plus one armor class. But not this campaign. Looks like there's a lot of different backgrounds that are included with this. I think. Nah, I think these were here earlier. Never mind. Alright, where is... There it is. Cross-class skills cost only a single point per rank instead of the normal cost of two points per rank. You're still restricted to one half your level for cross-class skills. That's okay. And it says to pick dodge, so we're gonna be dodgy. Alright, next. Okay, so I did a little bit of research and the name that we're gonna be choosing is Karsas? Abragu. 18, let's clear this out and say Karsas Abragu is a ranging rascal. And now we gotta pick the voice. Hmm. Time to spill some blood! What are we waiting for? Let's attack! No, we already uh, used that one before. Leave no one standing. They will die by my hand. To the death! This one's mine. Catch me up. Yeah, we could probably do that one. What about this one? Show them your steel! Attack! Now see what a true warrior looks like. Make this fight count! It will be your last! For honor and glory! Nah, I think we'll do this one. Leave no one standing. They will die by my hand. Alright, let's do this. Now, the first part of this campaign is kind of a little history lesson. Not a lot of action. So you might want to skip to the next episode. Hello. Once it's up. So, choose your language, Karsis. So, at this point, we could choose between French or English. And I don't speak French, so... The common language. What a strange question, Shaman Hammets. I think that's how you pronounce that. Greetings, Ku. Ku meaning son of the Iazi. Iazigis. I'm gonna say Iazigis because that's an I A. Iazigis. Okay. Greetings, Shaman Hammets. I commanded you to come because your initiation period will be over soon. You are going to be a valorous warrior. What must I do to be finally considered a warrior, Shaman? First of all, I'm going to interrogate you about your knowledge of our tribe, the, the Sarbates, the Azuchis. More precisely, I presume you know our gods, our customs, and our history. However, I suggest you, I suggest you visit our camp of the Tiza Danu, Danu mean river. For instance, Simacy knows perfectly our pantheon. I don't see how this jumble might be of any use in a fight. Are you daring to question our customs? Learn that the warrior who knows his environment and his enemy has more chances to earn victory. Apart from Simacy, who else should I talk with? Over to you to find the right interlocutors, Karsis. Now go, come back when you will feel ready. As you can see, it, it, it doesn't roll nicely in English, but you know, you can kind of understand. I'll come back soon. Okay. One thing in this campaign, they added a game mechanic called Prestige. You know what? The background noise is annoying me. Let's turn it down. Let's see, is it voices? No? That's it. Okay. 
Oh yeah, in case you noticed, I play these on D&D Hardcore. I don't play it on Very Difficult because the only difference between Hardcore and Very Difficult is that NPCs do double damage, which makes the game pretty much unplayable unless you're playing a tank all the time. And I know I do play tank-like characters, but, you know, it just, it's just way too hard, I, I feel. You know, and this is how it should be played. I, You know, if you sit down and do pen and paper, D&D, this is how it's played. So that's what I'm used to doing. Alright, let's accept. And I, I would say we got about ten minutes, so... Time for our history lesson, so... Here is Simacy, the first person that we're to talk to. Let's take a look at her. No description. Something I can do for you. Hello, Carsis. Isn't your initiation over yet? Whoops. The shaman wants to check misspelled my knowledge about our tribe. It is in keeping with our customs. All the shamans live in the past, Carsis. The Romans know how to live toward the future. Haven't the Romans any shaman? They have senators who advise their emperor, but senators take care of politics, not of customs. You need a comma there. However, comma, our warriors are much better than the Roman soldiers. Sure, but the Romans are powerful. We are their clients. Believe me, we should pay less attention to their customs. Perhaps, but Shaman Hamid's is going to check my knowledge. Grr. Quiet, Nashir. Do not pronounce that name in front of him, Carsis. Nashir doesn't like him. It sure comes from the bad smell. That's true. He stinks like a piglet. What can I do for you, Carsis? Alright, so this is where we're going to get some information. The shaman told me you knew perfectly our gods. As a matter of fact, what do you know about? Er, our main goddess is Tabidi, the goddess of the holy fire and of the family. Correct. The Greeks call her Hestia. What more? Er, well, Papaios is Tar, the sky. Indeed, the Greeks call him Zeus. His attribute is the thunder, and he throws lightning. Keep going. Er, Apia, the earth, is Papaiso's wife. Yes, for the Greeks, Zeus's wife is Hera. Keep going. Hmm, I think I'm going to need your help. The Sarmatees worship Thagi... Masidas, the god of the sea. The Greeks name him Poseidon. Of the sea? But we do not live near the sea. The Eosages the have lived near the sea in the past. Other Sarmatian tribes still live near the sea. Have you forgotten our history? I suggest you pay Erizamag Ur a visit. We also worship Oitusuros, the god of singing, music, and poetry. The Greeks call him Apollon, or Apollo. Oh, uh, yes, the handsome hunk. We worship Argympasa, the celestial goddess of love, too. The Greeks have Aphrodite. I've never seen a represent... I've never seen a representation of Aphrodite. She must be gorgeous. Then the hero Heracles, whose Scythian name has been lost over the time, or over time. The Greeks have credited their hero of our hero's tenth work, when he steals the beasts of Geryon. Finally, Ares, the god of war, whose Scythian name has been lost too. Why haven't we any temples like the Greeks and the Romans? We are nomads, Carsus. The Greeks and the Romans live in cities, where they build places of worship. For us, the respect owed to gods is more is a more personal matter. However, we sometimes offer sacrifices to Ares. 
go and see Wanda. She knows more about our customs. Thanks for the information, Simacy. Oh, what can I do for you? Who in the camp has the best knowledge of our tribe's history? Rizmag, arguably. Wanda, sh Wanda should know where he is. Her he is her husband, after all. Thanks. What else do you want? To whom should I talk to in order to learn more about our customs? Go and see Wanda. You'll find her near the horses. Very well. Thank you. Alright, time for some more history, but first let's bring up the map. That's where Wanda is, so we're gonna go to her first. Not really sure how long this is gonna take. I don't think there's any voice acting in this module or campaign. Based on the fact that it's done in two languages. Oh, by the way, if you bring up the inventory, we're equipped with a male suit which gives no bonuses at all, and then we have a hat, which, just like every other hat, improves concentration by one, and we're gonna wear it. All right, let's talk to Wanda. Hello, Carsis. Hello, Wanda. How are the horses doing? I take care of them, as you can think. Without his horse, and Iazuji is no more is no more an Iazuji. That's an I, right? Then there should be an N after the A. Who owns this white stallion? He is superb. Yes, he is outstanding. He belongs to Armaji. I I don't know what that little house over the E means. So I'm just gonna take my best guess, and if anybody watching knows what that means, just let me know. Amaji. Isn't it the name of an ancient queen? Who is she? The name of a queen? Perhaps. History is the domain of Arismag. Anyway, this Amaji is as haughty as a queen. However, she is gorgeous. And she has an imposing bearing. Where does she come from? She is a Roxolani Sarmatian. Her family has crossed Dacia during a transhumanance. I have no idea what that word means. I believe that her mother has married a distant cousin of Kati Zinzai's. Hence, the family joined the Iazjis. She is a female warrior recently initiated. A true Oyer Pata, a men killer. An Amazon? What gives her that reputation? It is said that she had killed three Dacians who attacked her on the way. Believe me, she has clearly chosen the path of the warrior. With Soslin, that's going to make sparks fly. Soslin is so handsome. Do you mean that Soslin is chasing after her? Don't be jealous already. You haven't seen Amaji yet. Besides, it's not about that. So, what did you want to say? Soslin and Amaji have been initiated together. However, Soslin has chosen the Spirit's Path. A path that Amaji despises, and yet, Hamitz has put in his mind to make them work together. He says they are complementary warriors. If it's just that... Anyway, I feel sorry for the young warriors who are going to be assigned to the... Amaji and Soslin's group. I already imagine Amaji. Soslin, stay behind, otherwise you're gonna pee on yourself. The first line is for the men who have guts. Huh. I'm not involved. Since your initiation is gonna be over soon, Hamets might assign you to their group. Huh. Let's talk about something else. What about this pack horse? Sir Juan is a strong horse. He, his travel chests, and the horses who graze behind will be assigned to the next group of young warriors. If you are assigned, come back to me. Soslin has already chosen the beautiful chestnut. But don't worry, all my horses are robust, tough, and fast. I hope so. So what do you want to know? 
Could you talk in detail about our customs? Hammonds is gonna is going to demand a sound knowledge. Customs are the topic the shaman is the most interested in. What do you want to know? Alright, I guess we'll go down the line here. Talk about the women's status. As the Scythian women, the Sarmatian women can hold high level positions. The Scythians even call the Sarmatian women the lords of the men. The women take part in wars and are equal to men. They are also experienced hunters. For the Greeks who reduce the women to the role of housewives, that's inconceivable. Not inconceivable. Therefore, they believe that we are the descendants of an unfortunate group of Scythian males captured by Amazons. Aren't the ancient Scythian female warriors and our female warriors the real Amazons? Likely. However, we say Oiropata, men killer. You know, and I've read all of this in Wikipedia, you know, so that's probably where the author of this got all this information from. I presume you were glad to be born Sarmatian and not Greek. Sure. What about the mothers? Some fathers wish that their wives stay safe in the camp, especially if they have got children to raise. Erismog would would better never put that in his mind. Anyway, in case of danger, all the women take their weapons. What about Hammets? What does he think about? Hmm. On one hand, he poses as the guardian of the customs. On the other hand, he is ready to shut his wife away inside his tent. Say, he did propose to Simacy to become his wife. She did well choosing... Calabes, even if Hammett's was a noble and Calabes only a freeman. What should we choose? Even if only Kati Zinze's has a superior rank than Hammett's, I understand why Simacy has decided to marry a simple freeman instead of such a noble. Do you know that the Greeks say that a Sarmacy woman can't get married if she hadn't killed a man? I've even been told that a woman must have killed three men before she can get married. If it were true, we would have gotten rid of the Dacians long ago. Alright, so what are we going to choose now? Talk about the cataphractory. Or is it cataphractory? I'm just gonna say cataphractory. That's heavy cavalry, and you know, and uh, what is it? Byzantium, Greece. I see envy in your eyes. As you know, the cataphractory are mounted spearmen. Horsemen and horses are armored. The cataphractory form a heavy cavalry. They are shock troops who charge at the decisive moment once the field has been prepared by the harassing mounted archers. They come almost all from the nobility, while the archers are mainly freemen. Even the formidable Roman legions fear cataphractory charges. The Romans are powerful, but fortunately they haven't realized the importance of the heavy cavalry yet. They are city dwellers. We are nomads. Customs of the topic the shaman is most interested in so talk about the tamgas a tamga is a talisman made of geometrical forms the pattern represents a tribe a family or a clan i know the tamga is a property sign it is used to brand the livestock and above all the horses so why does the shaman attach that much importance to it for the shamans the Tamga radiates a secret and magical power over time. It attracts success over his owner, and misfortunes over his enemies. Calabese must wear a Tamga much more powerful than Hammett's is, since he has won the favors of Simacy. Perhaps, doesn't Calabes forge top-notch weapons? It is also said that Sazlan owns a powerful Tamga which helps him to progress on the spirit's path. 
Interesting. Alright. What's next? Talk about the link between the warrior and his weapon. We, Sarmatees, believe the warrior's soul is linked to his weapon. Therefore, the warrior's weapon must accompany him on his travel to Tar, the sky. Therefore, the warriors, men and women as well, are buried with their weapons. When the warrior's favorite weapon is a sword, it is often embedded in the stone near the grave to keep watch on his remains. That's true, we worship the embedded sword. I haven't chosen my favorite weapon yet. Well, we will soon, I guess. Your instinct will guide you soon. Our main weapons are short and long swords and spears. We also use the Dacian Sikas in the Scythian axes. Of course, our archers prefer the composite bow we got from the Scythians. I'll get to the blacksmith Calabes. Alright, next. Talk about ceremonial burial. The people who reached a certain position during their life are buried in a grave inside the Kurgan, a tumulus which, with furnitures related to their social status. Warriors are also buried with their weapons. The furnitures are functional, functional and ritual as well. For instance, the metallic mirrors are related to the cults of the household. We warriors prefer to die in combat rather than to die of old age. Greeks are telling that about us as they told it about the Scythians. It's exaggerated. Few will die in combat at an age of 90 as the Sidon king, Ateus. Even if Arizamag might be happy to die in combat, I wouldn't be happy to bury him. If you say so. Alright, next, talk about the Draco. The banner with the shape of a Draco has been designed by the warriors of the steppes. The Dacians have, soon bor have since borrowed it. The Draco is fixed to a pole with its open wolf mouth made in metal, often brass, sometimes silver, while the rest of the body, made of painted fabrics or skins with the shape of a windsock, moves like a snake when the wind enters through the mouth. The Draco was first used by the archers to know the direction of the wind. Then the warriors have used it as a rally point. When the horsemen charge, they follow the Draco and keep the ranks. When the horsemen charge, the Draco wreathes above the troops like a dragon, scaring the enemies, doesn't it? Yes, besides the tutelary divinity fixed to the pole, leads the soldiers towards victory. The Dacians, who have even improved the resemblance with the dragon, use the Draco accompanied by the howls of war trumpets. Something able to frighten a Roman, but not a Sarmati. And the last one is the paths. Many of us choose the path of the warrior. They become cataphractory fighters or archers. King and nobles have chosen the path of the warrior. Some choose the path of the spirit. They use their spiritual energy in preference to their weapons. Only the ones who choose the path of the spirit can become shaman of their tribe. Others choose the path of the healers. They serve the community. Finally, some choose a personal path. Fighters of the shadow, hand-to-hand -hand light fighters, or storytellers. They are appreciated for their unique talents. Can one change a, change a path in time? Of course. For instance, Simacy is a formidable archer and a respected healer. I see. And that's about it. Enough talk. Where's Arismag? I'd like to know more about our history. For your initiation, I presume. Well, you should find him fishing somewhere along the river. I can't say he helps me much, but at least he doesn't oblige me to stay in camp as several married women. What about your boy? He is training like any Sarmatian child does, as soon as he is able to hold a staff. Uh, yes, of course. And I think that's about it. I was just passing by to see the horses. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to go do is we're going to talk to Arizamag. And he's over here somewhere by the river. But we are really running up on time. So I guess we'll do that in the next episode. And after having talked to all of them, then we'll go back to... 
what's, what's the guy's name? Hammett's the shaman. We'll get initiated and then we'll go on our first mission. So, in the meantime, this is Big Lo signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time in Tango Windia.